So hello everyone, this is Yom Rajput, back again with a new video on a video series of CSI and JRF All Sciences. So today I am back with a new topic called Quasi Binial Oscillation. Now this particular topic is basically asked by Mr. Gaurav and uh, this QBO deals with the dynamics of a stratosphere. Okay, we have already covered the dynamics of troposphere in the previous videos. So in case if you have any doubt like Gaurav, you can comment me on the comment section. Now this QBO topic is a bit difficult. It's not there in Tabak book or a peanut book, some other atmospheric sciences book. It's there in research paper. Okay. You have to go through research papers to get uh, this topic. Okay. So that's the reason why I'm here with this topic and I will make it crystal clear by the end of this video. Uh, sometimes they have already asked questions from QBO. I think three times directly they have asked and uh, sometimes they put this QBO in some other questions option. So in some option you will see QBO to make the question more hard. So that's the reason why I'm here with this video. But before the starting the video, I have the announcement. Uh, right now we are having the list price on our website. Uh, just use the coupon code flat 5500 to get instant discount and the final price will be only 3000. So let's start the video. Now quasi binial oscillation. Oscillation means what? Oscillation is basically something which happens at regular interval. Okay. Quasi binial matlab here it is not fixed the oscillation period is not fixed sometimes it took place at 28 months sometimes 32 months so the oscillation is not fixed quasi binial oscillation is basically a uh, equatorial zonal wind in lower stratosphere it took place in the lower stratosphere and uh, on certain period there is a movement of easterlies and westerlies in that zone yani just above the equator just above the equator in the lower stratosphere you will get sterling movement sometimes and sometimes westerly movement okay now the mean period of this cycle yani in cycle sterling westerly both both are there okay so the mean period is 28 months so let me show you the animation to get you so let's assume this red belt in the lower stratosphere means sterling and the the blue belt is westerly so this sterling and westerly is moving downward and both the wind belts sterling and westerly is, is having the period of mean period of 28 months yani in uh, like at certain interval it will start moving down and it will move down until it dissipates at the tropopause so it will move down like this and the rate is what 1 kilometer per month so each sterling so suppose there is a sterling it is moving down so the rate will be one kilometer per month okay but uh, again i can say that the the downward motion is not regular in both the cases for easterly the downward motion is irregular for westerly it is more regular okay and both will dissipate at tropopause so here in this video you can see when it touches the tropopause it simply dissipates and the new cycle will start so the whole cycle of westerly downward movement and easterly downward movement will take 28 months that is the mean value again it keep varying time to time okay is this clear moving to the next okay so this particular here mean period 28 months this is previous year question point to be noted mean period of QBO is 28 months okay so they have already asked sometimes they asked for other climate oscillation also so you have to uh, know all these things so for alino the period is two to seven years for southern oscillation it is two to seven years for pdo it is 20 to 30 years so it's a decadal process north atlantic oscillation again it's variable again uh, it's variable but it's a decadal process arctic oscillation it's variable madden julian oscillation 30 to 60 days so we have already covered madden julian oscillation alino and southern oscillation these three topics are already covered alino southern oscillation and ngo this pdo nao and ao i will make a separate video on pdo nao so and even sam southern annular mode all these topics are there in csir so i will make the separate video on them so basically uh, take a screenshot of this it will be very useful for you for uh, future questions okay uh, coming back to QBO so the very first study uh, is basically took place in some 18 1883 now year is not important for you 
so you know that this Karakatao is basically a, a volcano which took place in this particular year so when it erupts it uh, produces lots of as lots of uh, debris and it pour all those debris into the stratosphere now we know that in a stratosphere there is a movement of sterling and westerly downward movement so these debris are still uh, start circulating around the uh, globe okay so this is basically uh, so at that point of time, uh, we have sterling phage in the uh, in the the stratospheric region, and that sterling phage circulates the entire debris produced by the volcano. Okay, so this is the very world first study. It it called Karakatao studies. Okay, in nineteen zero eight, Burson launches the balloons from the Lake Victoria in Africa and find lower stratospheric winds blow from west to east. So what he find that. Uh, in 1883 we find that the debris are moving from east to west okay while in 1908 we find that the wind is moving from west to east so that means uh, at certain interval there is a movement of westerly and at certain interval there is a movement of westerly okay now in further studies in 1916 the circulation of stratosphere is basically done by this reed and alban so what he find that uh, from the balloon measurements, from the radio sonde measurements, uh, there is a band of alternate band of easterly and westerly winds which uh, uh, originate at a lower stratosphere, somewhere 30 kilometers, and moving downwards through the stratosphere at the rate of one kilometer per month. So here, point to be noted is uh, first it took place in the lower stratosphere. The downward rate is one kilometer per month, and we have alternate bands of Easterly and westerly at variable heights because it is moving down, right? So band appears at 13 months interval. Uh, now see, again I told you this 28 months is a mean value. So what they find that at that point of time, 26 months took place. Okay, the the cycle is taking place in only 26 months. Okay, so 13 month is for easterly winds. And 13 month is for western living. Okay, it keep varying. I told you, you no, know, it's not fixed. 28 month is not fixed. Okay, that's the mean value. Now, uh, after that, lots of meteorological studies took place, and they find the same thing. So there is a cycle going on in the lower stratosphere region. Uh, basically, a bands of stratosphere and western took some general characteristic of quasi biennial oscillation. So the mean periodicity of this oscillation is 28 months, but it keep varying between 20 to 32. This 28 is the mean periodicity. Okay, the mean zonal wind in the stratosphere near 30 hectopascal level. So here the amplitude is maximum 30 hectopascal level, and it is in the zone of 30 to 30 north to 30 south above the equator. So if you move towards the pole the the intensity will decrease and if you move towards the tropopause it will dissipate okay so towards pole also and towards tropopause also it will dissipate it is having alternate easterly and westerly design which falls down at the rate of one kilometer per month easterly phase is prevalent uh, during odd years so uh, as per the data of recent uh, recent research age which shows that in the years which ends with the odd number, their easterly phase are strong. Uh, while uh, the westerly phases are uh, stronger during the even years. Okay, so I, this is again according to the recent uh, data. Uh, till now, we don't know the exact reason for that. Again, it's a part of research. Its maximum amplitude is at 30 hectopascal, which is somewhere close to 25 to 30 kilometers, and over the equator. As you move towards the pole, it will dissipate. As you move towards the tropopause, it will dissipate. It decreases downward and poleward. So downward as well as poleward, it amplitude will decrease. It is hardly noticeable below 100 hectopascal. So below 100 hectopascal means height of 12 km. So below 12 km, you can't find uh, this QBO. Okay. Again, uh, according to some research papers, we shows that it is having some relation with the stratospheric warming. It affects um, vortexes, uh, Arctic vortex, Antarctic vortex, 
and it is again having effect on northern atlantic oscillation so that nao northern atlantic oscillation i will cover in some other video okay so till then stay tuned stay curious that's it for the video hope you like the video this much amount of information about qbo is quite enough for your csir exams i hope you like the video 